whether you love or hate Leica, there is something very special to be said about the N10. I've got this camera on loan for the next 36 hours from the local boys in Perth here at Camera Electronic. Now this video is not sponsored or affiliated with them in any way. They're running a promotion where you can get an M10 in a lens, I've got a 50 Summicron on this, uh, for a 36 hour period and play with it and have a go with it. You know, try before you intend to or maybe want to buy sort of thing going on. But this is gonna be my honest opinion about the camera and how it performs and it is not sponsored, affiliated in any way. Even though I am a Leica fan and I do love my Leica film cameras. Now instead of a boring review talking about specs and features and all that, which has been covered by much better people than myself, you guys know I am a film shooter predominantly. So we're gonna hit the streets and use this camera for what it was intended for. And I'm gonna give you my honest thoughts about what I think about this amazing piece of machinery. So far, I have to say this camera is an absolute joy to shoot. It's just so simple and easy. And one big plus is definitely the eye relief compared to shooting on a film M like an M6, which I own. The eye relief and, and viewfinder is uh, and rangefinder patch is so much nicer and so much easier to work with. Handling wise, the camera feels just like you know any Leica M that you may have used before. Um, but I definitely think the addition of something like a thumbs up grip is pretty essential. Uh, it is you know, considerably heavy compared to any film M um, that I've used, um, and even quite heavy compared to my Fuji X Pro 2. So I definitely think having that thumbs up for a little bit of extra support won't go astray. So one thing I actually, uh, actually forgot to mention is I decided to really not use the 50 Summicron that the guys gave me. Instead, I've been using my 40mm f2 Minolta Rocor lens, which is an M-mount lens that was originally de designed for the CLE system, or like a CL system as well. Um, it's a beautiful 40mm, um, and it's so small. It's actually a great pairing here with the M10. Um, but the rendering and the colours are beautiful. It's not as bitingly sharp as the 50 Summicron, but the lens produces some amazing results. And I've been so impressed with this M10 sensor so far. I think as a camera for street photography, this thing is pretty much perfect. I mean, this ISO dial that they've put on the edge uh, of the camera, on the recessed mount, it is so easy to get to. Flick it to ISO 1600, you know, using your uh, hyperfocal scale with range finder lenses makes focusing, you don't even have to focus. All you do is set your, set your distance and bam, whack, photo straight away. There's no need to focus or anything like that. It actually makes just walking around and snapping off shots of people really, really easy and fun. Um, and they just look amazing. This sensor is epic. You know what they say, all good things must come to an end and I'm about to go and drop the M10 back to the guys at the camera store. Um, so far, uh, pretty impressed and pretty happy with this camera. So I'm gonna drop this camera off, uh, head back home and then I'm gonna give you guys my final thoughts. What's up guys? So as you can tell, I'm sick now. It's actually been about a week and a half um, since I had the Leica M10 and since I went out and spent the day with it and you know, shot to my heart's content. Um, and the reason it's taken so long is because I've been trying to figure out a way to, to end this video and talk about the camera without one, sounding like a pompous asshole and two, offending a lot of people. Um, but before we get into that, I have to say that I really do think that it is an amazing camera. Um, it's not the best performing um, digital camera, like especially in like a wedding scenario. I mean, I would, you know, probably eight times out of 10 would definitely take, you know, like an X-Pro2 or, you know, a camera with autofocus. Um, 
and things like that. Like I think just for a professional working tool, um, as great of a camera as it is, I think you would be better off sticking with uh, a cheaper camera um, that does pack a lot more features. Um, but in saying that, um, outside of being a you know, camera for professional use, which it can be used, I mean, a lot of people are, um, you know, like me, I mostly shoot film, I'm really good with manual focus, like I would feel confident enough to use that on a professional job. So like I was saying, outside of a professional standpoint, um, it's not the best digital camera I've ever used is in terms of features, though the image quality is absolutely stunning, but it is the most, it's the, the most fun I've ever had using a digital camera. I've, that experience is just unlike any other. It is the most fun I've ever had shooting a digital camera, full stop, no ifs or buts. It was just so much fun to hit the streets, have that rangefinder styling, have that discreet body, amazing image quality, um, the sleek design, everything about it is fantastic. But the camera, I think, is a double-edged sword, and let's talk about why. The big thing off the bat, and the main problem, is price with this camera. I mean, it's, it's gonna run you 10,000 Australian dollars for just the camera. No lenses, just the body, and no extra batteries, nothing else, just the body itself and with whatever comes in the, in the packaging. But 10 grand for just the camera. Now, that kind of money, it's 99.9% .9 of people out there can't afford a camera like that. And I think that for 99.9% .9 of people out there, it's the wrong camera and not the right camera. But the problem, and this is what I was debating with when I was trying to you know, think about how to sum up this video is, I really think that the people who can afford to spend that kind of money on this camera, um, they don't care about a lot of the things that a normal photographer or consumer photographer would care about. And that's where we have this double-edged sword, I think. I feel like people who can't afford that camera, as, like me, I could never afford that camera, not in my wildest dreams, way out of my budget. But the experience was so fantastic. I loved, like I said, the best fun I've had using any digital camera and the best experience with any digital camera I've had. But the problem is I can't afford that camera. So I can't justify spending that kind of money. I'm not gonna get a bank loan out for $10,000, nor get a credit card and max it out on a camera. I can't afford a camera like that. So for me, the, the cons of not having autofocus, not shooting video, not being more of a professional, tool, so to speak, um, in, far, in, in terms of features, I could never justify buying that camera as much as I loved using it. But on the other hand, people who can afford to buy that camera don't care about the fact that it doesn't have this and that. They probably don't shoot it religiously. It's not a workhorse camera for them. Um, likely in that case, someone who could afford that camera and is a professional photographer, they've probably got something like a Leica SL as their main workhorse camera. So it's, it's really, really hard you know, to justify the money when you can't afford it. But when you can afford it, you probably don't care about the money or the, the lack of certain features. So it's, it's a real, you know, it's like a set of scales with this camera. I still have to say the image quality that that camera put out, the dynamic range was fantastic. That new dedicated ISO dial on the side of the camera is super handy. The menu is so basic and simplistic. It's just beautiful to work with. There's bugger all buttons, very easy to navigate. It's just 100% a pure shooting experience. And they really hit a home run with this camera. You know, having owned an M7 in the past, and currently I've got my M6 film body, um, it felt consistently heavier, but it literally, in terms of ergonomics, did not feel really any different at all than using a film M. I think if you were a film M shooter, you could pick this camera up and just go straight out and start producing some amazing images. Yeah, but like I said, guys, like an M10, it's a, a double-edged sword, I think, but an amazing piece of, of you know, photography and camera experience. Like it really was a beautiful camera to use, but it's not something I could ever afford or justify affording anywhere in the near future. But again, if you're one of those people who can afford this camera or you might already have this camera, you're probably going, yeah, you're right. You know, it is, it is such an amazing, you know, experience more than anything else, as well as an, a, you know, a beautiful piece of craftsman, craftsmanship um, with superb image quality in the lens lineup to go for it. Um, but yeah, just one of those things that I think 99% of us out there will never own. But I just wanna say thanks again, guys, to the guys at Camera Electronic in Perth who are running the Leica test drive deal. Um, they gave me the camera for 36 hours. It was a fantastic experience. 
and I loved every second of it. So that's all for me, guys. Thanks for watching another episode of Shoots with Coops. Yeah, tell me what you think in the comments below. Do you think that it's worth the money? Is it an overpriced um, piece of electronics? I mean, or do you agree with me that it is, you know, a bit of column A, a bit of a column B, but it really is a fantastic camera, but just unobtainable for most people out there. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching another episode of Shoots with Coops. Happy shooting, and I'll see you in the next episode, hopefully, hopefully feeling a little bit better. See you later.